What's going on guys? Vic DP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today we got another buy Vic 55 inch 4 player arcade cabinet going out to a commercial space and yes it's run in the Pandora's Box DX. Battle continue. Say look. <laughs> Alright guys, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP, the link tree and everything. What are you waiting for? I know I'm a broken record, but be sure to follow me on all the socials. You would have seen this ground up. Even the earlier, like first renditions of the artwork, which I'm gonna show you guys on this one because artwork is very unique on this. Pandora Box DX Battle Continue. That's why in the beginning of the video, if you didn't understand what I meant by battle continue, I was mimicking that. But yes, yeah, be sure to follow me on all the socials at Vic underscore VP. You would have seen ground up just like all my other builds. You would have seen it. Why aren't you following it? I don't know. But enough of the social plug in. Let's take a look at this build. This is really cool. I'm really excited for this. Uh, customer hit me up on Instagram. And actually, no, I went through Facebook Marketplace. Uh, originally went from Facebook Marketplace to Instagram because it's just so much easier for number one communication is way easier on Instagram. And sending like videos and also like voice stuff and pictures, it's just much easier also to be able to keep track on Instagram. Yes, Facebook Messenger does the voice and the video, but something about like Instagram is just much more fluid and much cleaner. So this customer hit me up. Originally was looking at a buy Vic. I think I had the advertisement of me, the old comic one, the original like first one that ever went out. Customer said, hey Vic, I'm interested in this. I'm building a kid's play space in my business. What can we do? And I basically sent him videos on the four player Pandora's box build because once you mention commercial space where strangers and people are just gonna walk up to this thing and play it, I automatically jumped to a Pandora's box. But he did want a four player setup and to date, as of this date, the Pandora's Box DX is the only system, the only Pandora's Box that can play four player. Now you let me know down below if there is another Pandora's Box. I've seen people, somebody suggested like a, I don't know, it was like a Pandora Saga. I, I don't know, this right now, from my experience, and I've done several other Pandora Boxes, the DX is the only one that will allow me to have four, especially four arcade controls. Two is mapped out to the regular family harness, that's the original Pandora's box, and it allows two USB encoders, as you can see, four players, three and four. So, if you ever are inquiring about a Pandora's box four player setup, whether you want it for your home or a commercial space, I always suggest the Pandora's box. And yes, I did send the customer the original video on this DX review that I did. The biggest deal breaker, honestly, in this situation was it does not accept coins. If you do put it in coin mode, four players do not work. In this customer situation, he doesn't want it on coin mode, so that is a plus. We don't need to worry about coin mode for that. The other thing I did mention in the video originally was that there is no NBA Jam, a classic hit, especially when you got four people. It was a very big deal. The Pandora's Box DX does not have the NBA Jam arcade four-player version. It does have the Super Nintendo two-player but not the arcade four player. I let the customer know. He goes, Vic, there's 3,000 games. The kiddos will play whatever is on it. I'm pretty sure they don't even know about NBA Jam. Let's rock. And as you can see, we are here now with the final product. I got a Buy Vic. This is the Buy Vic cabinet. This is my cabinet series. The Buy Vic running a 55 inch 4K TCL four player arcade setup. I'll do it just like in all my other videos. I'm gonna go through the whole entire setup. We'll talk about the artwork. I do wanna kind of talk about the artwork because I'm gonna show you the first renditions, what I thought was pretty cool, uh, and the customer originally did also think it was cool, but then it kind of led to a partner thought it was too chaotic and too filling, and we had to kind of trim it down. So we'll go through the whole entire spiel again. We'll do the build, you know, from ground up and the artwork, and we'll talk about the system and such. Now, a quick note, because you could already kind of see, I did mention, yes, this is a 55 inch 4K TCL. The Pandora's box obviously does not output 4K. It even says it here, it's actually going out to 720p. Vic, why did you get a 4K TV? I don't know, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, I get deals on the TCL 4Ks all the time. There's no point of me changing it. 
if you think about it, it is future proof. So if they ever wanted to, you know, upgrade it to a PC build, we can run 4K on it. But yes, the Pandora's box does output to 720p. It is a full screen stretch on all the games. There is no bezel on this like a PC build, but all in all, it works out. I'm not gonna get a different TV because it's a Pandora's box. It's kind of like the same theories when it comes to like the smaller cabinets, like a 32 inch. I don't normally get 4K 32s. If you want a Pandora's box, usually my 32s are 1080p. If you are doing a PC based system, then I'll have to bump it up to a 4K, but we do have to add more to the price. Again, just basic kind of mumbo jumbo. Yes, this is a 4K TV. No, the Pandora's box does not output to 4K, but also keep in mind, and I tell this to customers all the time, even in this situation with this company here, this is a TV. You could use it any way you want. Maybe one day you're doing a show and you have it out in the sh you know, in your parking lot. You might not want to have it actually play games. Maybe you want to do store advertisements. You have USB connections here. It is a smart TV. You want to put Netflix on it. Cool. This is it's a TV. You can treat it like a regular TV in your house. So there is advantages and such. It's just about whatever you want to do it. I've done that so many times. That I do tell people that like, oh wait, you're right. It's a regular TV. I'm like, yes, it's a regular TV. You could put. You know, you want to, I don't know, you want to put Netflix on it? I don't know. You want to stream? It's a regular TV. So, yes, the Pandora's box is 720p, but you could always stream 4K Netflix. And this is going out to a kid's space, so maybe they want to put, I don't know, I don't want to, a kid show with the co and a co and a melon. So, there you go, as far as the TV on that. So again, the Pandora's Box DX, honestly, now that I've played it more, and again, it works in this situation, that it doesn't need to accept money. The four players work great. It's got a lot of four player games, which is really cool. I mean, also remember, it's not all four player games. It even has a very nice menu where you could pick action games, but the biggest deal was the three and four player. So you do have four player games and also three player games. So. It's just clean. Uh, I definitely like everything about it. It's got the nice kind of long hold start. Apparently some of the games even do have save state and load state. I haven't tested that, but basically you just long press start instead of you know doing exit, you can press save state and load state and you go with it. It's just cool to see. I mean, you got like Alien vs Predator. We got like G.I. Joe, Arabian Magic, um, you know, Games that like you wouldn't even know, like what, what kind of game, like the Arabian Magic is a four player game and going on to a PC side, it isn't a ROM or a dip switch to set it to four player. You actually have to press F2 on MAME on the PC side to activate the four player cabinet mode. Uh, not like you go into tab on MAME, I'm kind of going off track, but it's just very cool. And the biggest deal that I do like about it is it's not filled and cluttered with a lot of duplicates. You do have your regular Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition and Street Fighter like World Warrior where there's like three or four of them and speed boost. But this setup, honestly, it's clean. The only kind of downside that I personally just am upset about is the no uh, NBA Jam. That's probably the only kind of deal. And you're not really gonna find a lot of like PSP stuff this is really down to like arcade stuff. You probably got some retro consoles like the Super Nintendo, but not a lot. All in all though, it works perfectly in this situation where any kid could walk up to it. They can even leave it on one game and we could remove like the auto exit out and the kids could just play this one game. I do feel like the customer is gonna be doing a lot of four player stuff. That's why I suggested the Pandora's box. And again, to make life easy and you know kids can't risk exiting and turning off or like a Raspberry Pi, they shut down incorrectly. A Pandora's box is just very simple. Again, as you can see, I can long press player one and we do have the option for save state, load state, and it says no, which I guess there is no save state set. Let's just see what happens. Let's just say, okay, cool. It says, okay, awesome. So if I just play around real quick, awesome. If I long press player one start, let's see if we load and will it bring me back to the, it did. Cool, awesome, so there you go. This does have a very nice save state and load state. Uh, I like it, it's cool, very simple. Again, this though is not set to coin mode. If you do want this to accept money, just like what I said in the original video, you're gonna have a bad time. I always get this question a lot and I always show it in the videos, but yes, my cabinet is on casters, two inch casters to be exact. You can wheel this thing around. As you can see, I'm even using 
the control panel to move it. Normally it's better to hold it by the kind of actual base of the cabinet, but the control panel is down. That's not going anywhere. Also, you can take advantage of where you are right now. I'll show you the control panel. It is on a piano hinge. I love it. Also, we do have the deck kind of artwork down here that does hide the piano hinge very well. Yes, technically you could kind of see, especially like the little lump here, but listen, I hit the piano hinge and artwork is artwork. Let's talk about the button layout on this. So we do have four players, obviously players one and two have a six button layout. Players three and four have a four button layout. In all honesty though, I believe all the four player games is nothing that uses four buttons on this specific setup. I already have the CNC set up, so it was just an easy, quick cut. I did do the dedicated four way on this with the three buttons. Again, like I said in all my videos, the dedicated four way is in parallel, it's in sync. It is wired the same, it's wired together with the player one joystick, but this does have the gate that is only set to four way, perfect for Pac-Man and Don Kong. And again, the three buttons, that's going out to the top three buttons here on player one. Awesome stuff. Also, we do have four cup holders on this. Um, he did like what I said. Um, this original video, I, the, the original posting I sent them was the comic themed cabinet. He did notice the four cup holders. He's like, I need those cup holders. I said, I got you. Don't worry. So this does have four white LED cup holders on it. I have it set the slow fade. Uh, it is connected to the LEDs underneath or the entire cabinet. Uh, and it's set to the green. As you can see, while it does fade, you do get kind of a slight flicker, uh, but that's kind of normal stuff. If I do leave it to green, I have the remote over there. If I leave it to green, it'll just stay solid on, no flickering, but that's your basic stuff. Clean wiring as always. We didn't do LED buttons because I did tell them, if you do have kids playing on this and they're gonna wail on the buttons, LED buttons are fragile. They have a very little tiny stem that's actually holding the LED in place and kids will just wail on it and most likely you will break it. So we did go with the non LED buttons, your professional concave hat buttons, I call them. I even did the players one to four white on that. So you do have one, two, three, four. And to spice it up a little more, I actually did the mismatch kind of swap in for the button. I bought white and black buttons. I swapped out, I took out basically the concave push button part, left the base, and then I swapped them. So as you can see, we have white base, Black button, black base, white button, and basically I went on and off. It also translated to the joysticks. Just little details, little details. What's also really cool, you don't see it there because I didn't cut the holes. I do have four buttons here for the admins in the future. I did not puncture or break the artwork, but essentially, yes, it is there. You might see my finger kind of tapping through. It is future-proofed and all. I didn't do the eight button layout for players one and two though, so if he does need eight buttons later on, I'm gonna have to just drill that out. But as you can see, awesome stuff. Artwork, he was very big on his logo. The logo has to be there. Um, I always do say you do need to send me a high resolution logo. Um, his was, it was, it was good. Uh, I wish it was a little bit more clear. When you do go in closer, you kind of see like the edging. Um, it was more he sent it in a PDF format. Usually it's a Photoshop or an Illustrator format, but it's A-OK. -okay. It worked out perfectly. It's not like we're gonna make a 15-foot banner out of it. So I think it looked great. It translates everywhere. So yes, this has the company logo everywhere. You got it on the kick plate. You got it on the sides. You do have it on the marquee up top, and you got it three times on the control panel. Again, customer approves all the artwork. I love everything about it. And also one time for that under control panel, here. Awesome. I, I love it. Everybody definitely does notice this piece of artwork here. Uh, like I said on the Secret Wars, he's like, Vic, you're going to give me that, right? I was like, yes, I have to put artwork on this. It's just a cleaner finish and it looks great all around. Also, I did dual two-tone uh, T-molding. You can see the base cabinet is white, but the control panel I did black just to kind of go with the flow. Customer didn't really even know what T-molding he wanted, uh, so he kind of put his trust in me and I think it worked out. Now that we're on the subject of artwork, let's take a look real quick. Let's talk about it. So again, his original retail space, wherever this is going, he actually has a painter, a mural person that's painting a mural, uh, but it's graffiti style. So he did want a graffiti style artwork theme. Uh, so I was going through a couple of renditions. The biggest thing basically when it comes to artwork is you need a background. This way it fills the entire cabinet and then you start adding the little bits to it. 
This, in all honesty, you see here is actually an iPhone background that I looked up and it's an arcade. So it looks like there's an actual like broken arcade cabinet here. It's got like the Mario mushroom and a donut and this dude and a five hour energy. Uh, he liked it. It was pretty cool. And basically I kind of doubled it, expanded it out and it, it, it just flows with the cabinet. Again, it's supposed to be a graffiti style. Um, I don't want to call it sticker bomb. I feel like it's partially sticker bomb. But it's not like my Mario stick bomb. It's just it's just graffiti foot style. Now again, like I said originally we had some ideas. Uh, his wall that he's actually painting the mural on, he actually has Bart Simpson doing like the El Bardo, uh, you know, like he's like low. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Let me now try to find like you know game characters that look graffiti wise, like graffiti out or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna show you right now the first rendition that I did and. It was, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I actually did two, so I always do the sides. Anytime I talk about artwork, I always do the sides first. If you like the sides, then it'll translate and we continue on with the control panel and the marquee center area and the kick plate. So, send him like the first side and I, I found a nice picture of like Ryu like throwing a Hadouken and I think like that one has like Homer. I found a lot of basically game characters that were graffitied out. You know, like a graffiti rendition of that character. and. It looked pretty good. Even like the background, I, I'm not sure if I use this background that's here now. I might have used a different one. I don't really remember. It's been a while for it. But you can see the left side and the right side. I'm basically just going to photo uh, in video editing. I'll just kind of show you both in the process. But basically we went through two renditions. The first one he was like, there's a little bit too many characters. Then we kind of, you know, I bought, I removed a couple characters. But then a partner got involved and they're like, you know what, Vic, it's too chaotic. There's too much going on. Let's just kind of bring it down to just a background and our logo. We need to have the logo there. So his logo traditionally does not have like this purple splash. I kind of just did that kind of like, you know, to go with the graffiti side of it. But all in all, I think it came out great. The left and the right side are identical. There's no difference in them. It's identical. Just the lollipop. The actual logo is, uh, you know, flipped. You got the lolly on this side, whereas on this side, the lolly is in the rear. And it just translated from there. Once they said yes to the sides, then I said, what do you want to do with the kick plate, the control panel? He goes, Vic, just keep it the same, you know, keep it flowing good. And that's honestly the artwork side of it. It's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, he did like the touch that I did with that whole purple paint splatter. And he goes, Vic, we love it. Continue and print. Uh, usually that's the big deal. Once I get the print down and you give me the A-OK -okay three times, I print. There's no going back. So again, also like I said, the under kind of vinyl that goes underneath the control panel, this wall here, I always do it and it goes the entire back of it. I'm the type of person where I just would rather wrap it. Just like what I did in my last videos, I showed you that there is vinyl behind the TV. I would rather just get the vinyl. Uh, you know, I don't like to cut corners. I don't want to save a dollar or two or not really a dollar or two, but you know what I mean? I rather just wrap the hell out of it. It's actually funny in this situation, if you do remember like way back, because some people don't really recognize when I said about the side panels, that is, that right there I cut from the side panel. I, like I said, get an entire rectangle. You know, that right there is a good, I don't even know, what is that, two feet by like four feet. That's a four by two piece right there. You know, I could save a couple of bucks and tell Gulf Coast don't print that, but to me I would rather keep it and you know be safe with it i got two of them so it's awesome you're back there you can see again the artwork there you can also see i'll take you through the back the back on this is honestly bare not meaning artwork wise there's actually really nothing in the cabinet nothing all like the heart of the system is actually in the control panel i did that on purpose again control panel is detachable i do have a rear door here i'm going to deliver this cabinet these logos so i'm going to deliver it to them and then I'll put the rear door. But in all honesty, there's nothing inside. When it came to like, you know, if you're gonna do a PC build, that would be inside. But yes, this right now is just a hollow piece. I do have still the shelf here. There is no audio sound system on this. The TV is the audio. So I will have like the remote to the TV and the remote to the LEDs there. But like I said, it technically is empty there. I have everything. The heart of the system, the Pandora's box, is actually on the inside of the control panel. I'll bring you in closer. 
So it's pretty cool. I'm going to keep you there. Again, I do usually have two screws that go back here. So the control panel is locked in and it won't open up. I'll press start. But again, on piano hinge, you can see the wiring, everything clean and neat. You got the USB encoders. I'm not even holding the, the panel, but you do want to hold it so it doesn't give out. I do have the Pandora's box right here. Just cleared the space of the joysticks and the buttons. I basically did this in a way that everything's in the control panel. All they have to really do is connect like the HDMI. So the HDMI is going to go back in the panel, in the, in the cabinet, along with the LED strip here uh, and the power. That's really the only thing that's going to stay in the base. Everything else comes with the control panel. So it's one, two, three. I have nine screws in that's holding the control panel, so it's not going to go anywhere. Once the control panel is down, again, you put your two screws in, and this won't lift up anymore. But again, rock solid stuff. It's just, I love it. I love every second of it. Now, while you're there, this will be kind of like a little tiny tutorial. There's no real tutorial for Pandora's box, but I'm just going to tell you this because this specific Pandora's box, it does something that I notice, and I'm going to do a whole boot right now. But since you're there, you might notice this little switch right here. This little switch right here. This switch is actually for the Pandora's box. I'm going to do a total reboot, and it looks like for some reason, if the TV is not on before the Pandora's box boots, you just have an orange screen. So we're gonna, I'm gonna bring you back and you know, we'll do some gameplay real quick, but let me just give you a whole full boot. As far as this situation, uh, it's really the Pandora's box. So now usually like in this situation, people want this to be just like an arcade cabinet. Like I just plug it in, I can walk away from it and go. So I'm actually gonna do a full shutdown and I'm gonna do a full reboot just to show you what exactly happens with this Pandora's box. In this situation, the TCL, let me actually turn it off while I talk. Normally, I do like to turn off the TVs. I tell all my customers, turn off the TV before you kill the power. In this situation though, I'm just gonna kill the power. I usually, anytime you do kill power, you usually say give it about 30 seconds before you do a reboot on it. Give it a couple more, give it a couple more, and I'm gonna flip the switch on. When you flip the switch on, I do have in the back a very nice simple switch with the three prong kind of computer connection to it. You can see the LEDs turn on. Technically, because the Pandora box was on, it is turning on on the inside. The TV in this situation, I do not have set to store mode. So you can either press the power button there or you take the remote and power on. But this is what I do want to show you and why I have this specific switch on the control panel. Again, it's the Pandora's box. Because the TV is off before the Pandora box turns on, it doesn't recognize the signal, so you're just gonna get like an orange blob on the screen. Uh, a little weird. This is also another reason why I didn't, yeah, there it goes, I was gonna say, is it gonna do? And you get this. Uh, you know, even if I did set the TV to store mode and turn on on its own, it would still give you this orange blob. What do I do now, Vic, what happened? That's where you flip the switch now. Turn off the Pandora's box, this you don't need to give it 30 seconds, but I'm gonna flip the switch right now. You can give it about maybe 10 seconds. This is the real reason why I did not put this in store mode. On these TVs and any other TV, usually if you put it in store mode, it will turn on once power is given. But once I turn off the Pandora's box, you get like a TCL advertisement. <coughs> and box DX. Battle continues. So, to alleviate the stress of like Vic, like now you have to turn off the TV to get rid of that advertisement. This is just the easiest way. That is the reason why I have this switch. My regular Pandora's box 18S Pro, it automatically like goes to like eight, it, it works. As you can see though, in this situation, it kind of gives us an orange screen. So that's why this kind of switch is nifty here. It's a quick switch, nothing too crazy. And as you can see though, the Pandora's box does boot quick enough. It's just in all honesty, the entire timing of when the TV turns on and fully is on, the Pandora box was already powered on and it kind of, from my understanding, it's just not recognizing the signal. Um, but that's honestly the only thing. If this customer does decide to turn it off and that's also another thing, Pandora's boxes are designed to be on 24 seven. They are commercial units. So you can essentially leave this on 24 seven and leave it be. Pandora box. And again, going back to what I said, this does not have an actual audio system. There is no speakers here. I don't have a Z313 on this. They're just gonna use the TV speakers. It's just easier that way. 
Uh, you know, you don't want kids to kind of find the wheel and bump up the volume and all that. So all in all, solid stuff, minus that one thing where if you do power down. But again, this Pandora's box, it's awesome. Real quick, I don't know if you can see it there, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight version, eight, nine, ten. We have ten versions of Street Fighter II Champion. You know, you got your du your duplicates, but not as intense as my 8018S Pro one. But you're going to find your basic bangers. You're going to have all the classics are there. You're not going to have NBA Jam though, so I shouldn't really say it that way. You're not going to have all of them. But all in all, you're going to have a good time with this. This, I'm not worried about this at all, especially for the kiddos. I love that you can press start. It brings you into kind of like the breakdown sections and... You want to play some fighting games, you want to play some, I don't know, 3D games. Uh, let's see what's in this. This now is probably like your Super Nintendo and like maybe a PSP or a PS1 rendition game. You got Pro Evolution Soccer, which I doubt works. But yeah, all in all, solid stuff. I got a Pandora's Box DX in a Bivik 55-inch four-player arcade cabinet. Delivering this thing tomorrow. And uh, that's it. Stay tuned now because now we get into some shooters. I got some rail shooters coming up. But there you guys have it. VVP. Game on, my guys. Game on.